Acts 26. Uh, as Paul is speaking here in, in this book of Acts, keep in mind that, that he has been arrested. He has, he has done something that he was told not to do, and, and that was to preach about the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when, uh, when the Romans and uh, the government of Israel told him not to preach about the Lord Jesus Christ, they were very serious about that. And uh, he, he got arrested, and now he's fixing to go before, he's fixing to go before two men that are listening, they are listening to what he has to say about about breaking the law of preaching about this man, Jesus Christ. These two people that he's about to go before is the Roman governor, we would call him, uh, the, the Roman uh, individual that is in charge of the Israel province, and that man is named Festus, and he is uh, he's a, a Roman that will listen to what they have to say, but he's a Roman also that will lock you up and put you away real quick. And, uh, and, and so not only is Paul speaking before this Roman named Festus, but Festus uh, it has a king under him, the king of Israel, who's really not a Jew, but he's the king of Israel. His name is King Agrippa. And, uh, and, but you have to keep in mind that the king of Israel will only do what the Roman, what the Roman governor will allow him to do. Right. Uh, that, that king, and everything he says, he's got to kind of look out the side of his head, kind of glance over to that Roman to make sure that he's not offending Rome. So, so Paul is standing before these two people. Now, I want you to go all the way to verse 22, Acts 26 and verse 22. Keep in mind that Paul is being interrogated here by these two men. And, and here's where it starts right here. It says in verse 22, having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. See, Paul is saying this in front of Festus the Roman and King Agrippa, the king of Israel. Right. And he's saying this. He said, what I'm saying has been written in the Old Testament. Right. What I'm saying is what Moses wrote. Remember, Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Right. So, so he's saying, what I'm, what I'm preaching about is what Moses said and all the prophets have said it. And so he said, if you want to find out about the Messiah that I'm talking about, go back and look in the Old Testament and you'll, you'll see all the things that I'm saying is true. Then he says in verse 23 that Christ, this is what he's saying is in the Old Testament, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. You see, the Roman, Roman governor said, Paul, you're crazy. You're just crazy to believe all of this stuff. Notice in verse 25, but he said, I am not bad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the, now, notice he says, for the king 
he's referring to the king of Israel, Agrippa. He said, for the king knoweth of these things. Well, Agrippa knew all the prophecy. He knew all the things in the Old Testament. He said, for the king knoweth these things before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. That is, King Agrippa knows that everything that I'm saying is true. He knows the Old Testament. Can you see old Festus kind of looking out the side of his eye at King Agrippa? As Paul points out that Agrippa believes all these things. He knows all these things are true. He says they weren't done in a corner. He's referring to they weren't done in some back alley in some little corner that nobody could see it. All the things of the prophets was done all out in the open. Everybody knew they were true, including, he says, King Agrippa. And boy, I can just see old Festus glancing over at King Agrippa. And King Agrippa probably thinking, swallowing real hard, hmm, how am I going to get out of this? You know, he's got him kind of caught. Now notice what he does. Paul is such a brilliant man here. Amen. He says in verse 27, King Agrippa, believeth thou the prophets? Now, see, what he's done is he's backed King Agrippa in a corner. Amen. Because if King Agrippa says, yes, I believe the prophets, then he's got to admit that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. Because right. Christ fulfilled all those things. So now he's offended the Roman governor if he says that. And if he says, no, I don't believe the prophets, then he's got, he's got revolution on his hand from the Jewish people. That you're our king and they'll, they'll overthrow him and then it's going to be a battle between Israel and Rome. And Rome does not want that. They want everything just peaceful. Amen. So Paul has backed this king in the corner. But look what happens. Old Paul is smarter than we know. He says, I know thou believest, in verse 27. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. He says, I've listened and you almost did it. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am except these bonds. Agrippa didn't admit to anything, but he said, you know what? You almost persuaded me, Paul. You almost persuaded me. I'm, I'm almost a Christian. He said, Paul said, I know that you believe. I know you believe. You see, he didn't. He said, when he turned to, when he turned to the king, he asked him, he asked them a, a, a question. He said, he said, uh, uh, do you believe this? In verse 27, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? He kind of backed him in a corner. But notice that Paul did not put him in that corner. Amen. Because Paul immediately answered for him, I know thou believest. See, he did, Agrippa didn't have to answer. That saved his life in front of that Roman. Because Paul answered for him, I know thou believest. So Agrippa, Agrippa would escape. He, he would, I imagine, was looking over at Festus. And, and, but see, Festus couldn't, Festus couldn't throw him out of office. He couldn't arrest him because he didn't answer the question. Believest thou the prophets? And then Paul immediately, to save Agrippa's life, jumped in and he says, I know thou believest. So Agrippa never had to answer the question. That saved him in front of the Roman. And, and so, so he says, Paul, Paul, almost, you've almost You've almost convinced me. I'm almost a Christian. It, and I imagine it was kind of kind of jokingly said. You've almost convinced me, Paul. You've almost done it. I got to thinking the other day 
about that. I wonder how many people are almost, <coughs> almost a Christian. The, the title of my message today, and it's really not much of a message, it's just some thoughts that, that I had just briefly I wanted to share with you. I titled it Almost and Altogether. That's what he, that's what he said. Paul said, after, after he said that almost thou persuadest me, Paul says in verse 29, and Paul said, I would to God, I wish, that's what he said, I wish that not only thou, speaking to the king, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I. I wish you were almost and altogether a Christian. Almost and altogether. That's what I want to talk about today because if you're not almost and altogether, then you're not saved. And, and so many people are almost. Now what was it that, that he said, almost thou persuadest me? Well, he's referring to the fact that yes, I know the Old Testament, I know what's been said in the Old Testament, and the Old Testament almost persuades me that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. That he was. Yeah, I, I, you've almost you've almost persuaded me to that. Why well, what was it in the Old Testament that almost persuaded him that Jesus Christ was the Messiah? What well, we see, the things that happened that were that were prophesied in the Old Testament. Why, I looked it up the other day and there were like 49 different things that were prophesied that Jesus absolutely did. And I read somewhere where somebody said to be able to do just 10 of those things the way that Jesus Christ did it would be like a one in 10 million chance that one person could be born and live and do these things. That, and, it, and it's like when it gets over to 20 of the things, then it goes up. And 30 of the things, it goes up. You li listen to the things that are prophesied in the Old Testament that Jesus Christ did in Micah chapter 5, and we won't go there, but I'll give them all to you, that these, I just wrote down a few because I didn't have a whole lot of room on my little old sheet here to, to make notes, but but I want, but there's a whole lot more. In Micah chapter 5, it prophesies that the Messiah is going to be born in Bethlehem. You know where Jesus was born. Yeah. In, in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, a verse that many of you know, it says he's going to be born of a virgin. And you know what? The Messiah was born of a virgin. And King Agrippa knew that. He knew absolutely about the story of Joseph and Mary. And he, he knew that family. And he knew absolutely. He had already heard all of the details of the history of that. In Genesis chapter 12, Moses wrote, that the Messiah would be born from the lineage of Abraham. You know what the bloodline of following back from Jesus is? All the way back to Abraham. I, I, he also writes that, that he would be born of the bloodline of Isaac. You see, from Abraham, there were a lot of sons. But it says the Messiah has got to come from that one son named Isaac. And Jesus Christ was born of the lineage of Isaac. Isaiah wrote that he would be born of the lineage of David. And Jesus Christ, follow his bloodline back, comes from the lineage of David. In Isaiah again, chapter 7, it says that his name, that he will be called Emmanuel. And Jesus Christ was. He was God. That God was with them. And he was called Emmanuel. Jeremiah chapter 31 said that when the Messiah was born, there would be a massacre of children. And there absolutely was by, the, by King Herod. A, a, a horrible, horrible thing that took place at the birth of Jesus Christ. Uh, Malachi chapter 3 uh, said 
that that there would be a there would be a messenger that would precede the coming of the Messiah. And John the Baptist preceded the Lord Jesus Christ, proclaiming that the Messiah was come. And when John the Baptist saw Jesus Christ, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Psalm chapter 2 says that, that he will be called the Son of God. Jesus Christ was called the Son of God. Uh, that, and so Psalm 78 said that this Messiah would speak to the people in parables. Jesus Christ spoke to the people in parables quite a bit. Uh, Zechariah chapter 11 said that the Messiah would enter Jerusalem on a donkey. That Jesus Christ rode in that last week on that Sunday, rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. Isaiah chapter 53 said the Messiah would be crucified. You know that. Jesus Christ was nailed to the cross on the hill of Golgotha. Uh, Psalm 16 said that Messiah would resurrect from the dead. And Jesus Christ fulfilled that prophecy. He rose from the dead. Amen. It goes on and on and on. Prophecy after prophecy written hundreds and hundreds of years before the birth of Christ. And Jesus Christ fulfilled every one of those things. That's why, that's why yeah, when, when, when this king was asked about all of that, he said, well, you know, you've almost persuaded me. You see, he knew all of those things but yet he did not apply it to his life. That's right. A lot of people, a lot of people know all the details about the Messiah. They know all the details about the Lord Jesus Christ. They know all the details about what I preach and what other people preach and about what's in their Bible. They know the details, but you see, they never applied it to their life. Almost. They're almost. King, you know these things are true. That's what... That's what Paul, the apostle, said. Paul, Paul said to the king, I know that thou believest. I know you do, but yet you've never done anything with it. Right. Well, a lot of people believe in God. A lot of people believe in Jesus Christ. But yet they've never done anything with their knowledge of Jesus Christ. You can be, you can be the most knowledgeable Bible person there is, but I can tell you right now, the old saying, you're going to miss heaven by 18 inches because you've got the knowledge here, but you don't have the love down here. Amen. You've, got to, you've got to get it into the heart. You, Jesus Christ and, the, and God himself, when they wrote the scriptures, never do they say, you've got to believe in Jesus in your mind. They said, you've got to believe in your heart. That's right. What is there about the heart? There's something inside of that heart that we have an affection for other people for. You've got to fall in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to believe with all, without doubt Amen. that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Savior of the world. You've got to believe without a doubt that he is what he said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's no other way to get into heaven. You can't get good enough, yet there's nothing that we can do to get into heaven. You've got to absolutely give your heart to Jesus Christ. He said, he said that, do you believe? And then Paul answered very quickly, oh, I know you do. I know you do. You believe. But there's a difference between believing almost and believing altogether. That's what Paul said. I wish you were almost. Almost thou persuadest me. Almost I believe. Almost. And Paul said, boy, I, I wish you were almost and altogether Amen. like me. There's a difference between almost and altogether. Amen. And that's the thing that I want to just look at just kind of brief, briefly for a minute. Are you an almost Christian? Or are you altogether a Christian? See, a lot of people are almost saved. They're almost. They, they almost got it. They, 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 know the, they know the Bible. They know what to do. They're, they're almost a Christian. They're almost converted. Almost. Almost getting there. Almost got a foot in the door. Almost, almost persuaded that Jesus...
Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They're almost baptized. Oh, they've been in the water, but they've never really truly been baptized in the, in the blood of Jesus Christ. They're almost in heaven. There's a lot of people that, that, that think they're headed there, but God said straight is the way, but narrow, narrow is the way into heaven. Well, I tell you what, it's, a, it's an open trough heading down to hell, but it's a narrow gate going up into heaven. We've got to truly believe with all of our heart. We've got to give it all to him. We're almost born again. Almost won't get you there. That's the thing that we have to try to persuade. Listen, I know that I'm probably talking to, to mostly Christians here. And I hope that I'm talking to everyone that's a Christian here. Amen. That everyone is persuaded without a doubt that you're all together a Christian, not just almost a Christian. But there's a lot of people out there that we know that think they're saved. They think they've got it. They think they've, they've, they've almost got the thing. I'm almost, you almost persuaded me to believe almost Christians just won't get there. You know what? Almost to, mo to some people is just getting cleaned up. I, I'm going to turn over a new leaf. Before I ever got saved, I, I turned over so many new leaves that I didn't have a leaf left in my yard. I was turning over new leaves all the time. I'd go out and do this, and then I'd say, well, I'm going, I, I have got to get my life right with God. I'm going to get right with God this time. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to change. I'm going to do that. Listen, changing is not salvation. Amen. Anybody can change. You can give up this sin, you can give up that sin, but giving up sins is not salvation. People get cleaned up. They dress the part. They act the part. They come to church with a with that Christian look on their face and they sit in church and sit in church. I did for three years I sat in church convinced that I was cleaned up and on my way to heaven because I wasn't doing the stuff that I used to do. I had stopped that. I cleaned up. I turned over a new leaf. But down in my heart, I had never given it to the Lord Jesus Christ. I truly had never been saved. I knew that. I knew there was something wrong because, because the, the part of me that kept wanting to go back to the world. And I'm wondering and I'm fighting, why is it that I want to do this? Why is it that I do that? Why is it that I keep thinking this? Why, why is it that I have not truly changed the way that I should have changed? I had turned over all the new leaves. I had gotten a lot of stuff out of my life. But I truly was not altogether a Christian. I was, I was almost there. If you'd have looked at me, you'd have seen I was almost there. I, I didn't act the part anymore. But acting the part on the outside and living the part on the inside is two different things. And I was almost a Christian. For three years, I sat in a church and was almost a Christian. We've got to, to be able to persuade people to look at themselves, truly look at themselves because their eternal life depends upon it. You've got to be all together. All together. A hundred percent of it. It means... It means give it all to the Lord Jesus Christ. All together means complete. You've got to be completely, not almost, completely a Christian. 100% born again. It doesn't mean that we're going to live a perfect life because there's no way that we can live a perfect life on this earth. We're still flesh. We're still going to think things. We're still going to do things. We're still not absolutely completely, 100%, completely cleaned up. We still live in this old world and right. we still live in this old flesh. And sometimes we get angry and sometimes we get mad and sometimes we do something that maybe we shouldn't do. That's why God said that he gave us 1 John 1, 9, that when we, when we act out, that we can repent and go back to him and he'll forgive us of sins. Yes, we're gonna. We're not completely there yet, but I can tell you one thing: my soul is completely washed in the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. I, there was a day that I got down on my knees after 
after joining the church, after being in the church, after going through everything that I went through and turning over all the new leaves, I went home one day and realized, you know what? I still, I'm, I'm still the old person. And I got down on my knees, which I had not done. I got down on my knees and I prayed. And I gave it all to Christ. And I said, dear God, forgive me. I want you to be my Savior. I'm going to put all of my faith in you today. And, and, and I'm telling you, I never looked back from that day forward. Gave it all to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not, it's, it's not looking the part. It's not acting the part. It's not turning over a new leaf. It's giving your heart to Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what all together is about. You've got to be all together, 100%. Give it all, not almost. Listen, take your Bibles if you would and turn over 14 pages to the right. Over in, to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Over there to, uh, as I go over to verse 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, <coughs> verse 17. It says this. Now, if it's 14 pages or, or 16 pages in your Bible, that's okay. You'll find it. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, this is the thing we have to look at. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, that's any man, any woman, any teenager, anyone that has come to that age of accountability. Therefore, if any man or woman, child, teenager, be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. Uh, you have to look at yourself and say, you know what? As, as truly as, as, as old things passed away in my life. Well, I can tell you, the biggest old thing that passed away in your life is when you gave your life to Jesus Christ, that old sin nature passed away. Amen. That, that nature that was sending you to hell is gone. It's passed away. And behold, all things become new. Well, you got a, you're a new creature now. You're a new person now. But the question is, uh, are you truly a new, new creature? Do, do you live that way? Uh, are you truly born again, a, a child of God? Uh, that we have to look at that. We have to answer that. Am I truly born again, a new creature? Has old things passed away in my life, and have I become a new creature? Well, I tell you what, when I look at myself today, I still see the same old Larry Lane. But it's the same old face. It's the same old scars. It's the same old parts. It's, here I am. It's just older and wrinkler and fatter when I look in the mirror. But the one thing that I am, when I look in the mirror, I know <clears throat> that I see a new creature, a new person born through the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm not the same old person anymore. I, I, are you born again, all together, all together a Christian? How do you know that you're all together a Christian? Well, I, I always go to Romans. I take people over to Romans. It's back just a few pages from where you are, Romans chapter 10. In Romans chapter 10 is a great verse that I always try to get people to understand when we're talking about uh, being saved. In Romans chapter 10, back a, back a handful of pages, uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. In, in verse 9, it says this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. That, it, you see, what you have, to, you have to answer that question. Have you confessed it with your mouth and believed in your heart? Confession with your mouth doesn't mean that you have to come to me and we sit down and you confess something to me. Oh, I don't need to know most of that stuff that you that you confess. You 
you're not confessing sins. God knows all those sins. Right. You don't need to confess anything to him. You don't need to confess anything to me. What you need to confess is the fact that you're lost. Right. That, you, that you do not know Jesus Christ. You confess to him not only that you're lost, but you confess to him that you believe. That you believe truly that he is who he said he was. Amen. The Son of God, the Savior of the world. That's between you and him. It's a confession that you do to him. Dear God, I know I'm lost. I know I'm a sinner. But Lord, I believe that what you said is true. That you died for me on the cross of Calvary. That you died and gave your life for me. You don't have to say those words. I'm just saying that, that we've got to make some kind of confession to him that we're lost and he's the only way. That it says if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Your confession of he, he is the only way. It's a confession of Jesus Christ that he died on the cross for your sins. A confession of Jesus Christ. And then it says, and you shall believe in that heart. <clears throat> well, I tell you what, all of us know things about the heart. Do you remember the first person you ever fell in love with? And maybe sometimes, maybe it kind of went sour for a while or you had some difficult times or something. Or maybe you got hurt. Do you remember any of those times in which something happened and in your heart you felt sick? In your heart there was a, it wasn't the same as in your head. You didn't have a headache, but you had a heartache. That there's something about the heart that we don't understand. It's, it's different than the brain, but we can believe with our heart in Jesus Christ, not with our head. We believe in our heart. Have you truly believed in your heart? That is, when you when you love somebody, what do we say? We say, well, we have we draw a heart, and we put their initials in it. We put our initials in it. We put a little arrow through it for for some ridiculous reason, <laughs> and, and you know, and things like that. And we we have this little heart, and it's and it's a symbol of our love. We're acknowledging, I love that person, not with my brain. I love that person with my heart. Amen. Yeah. And that's what God is saying. Love me with your heart. Just like you love this person. Just like you love your child. Just like you love your grandchild. Just like you love, love me that way. <clears throat> if you'll confess with your mouth, I love you. And if you'll believe in your heart, I truly love you. You see, that's what he's saying. By the time it comes out of your lips, you're saved. God already knows it's here. God already knows. He hears it. In verse 10, he says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scriptures say, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Amen. Verse 12, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Amen. And then he says in verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's, that's how... That's what an altogether Christian is. You had that moment that you got down and acknowledged that he was who he said he was. And you believed with all of your heart that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross of Calvary. Are you an almost or are you altogether? Amen. And only you can answer that question. I'm going to give everybody an opportunity here today. Miss Trish, could you come and, and just, just play a little something? And, and as she plays, we'll close out in prayer. But if you need to come and talk to God, or if you need to come and talk to me, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that and, and talk to me. If you, I'd love to, love to take a few moments and share with you how you can absolutely know 
that you're all together Amen. born again. Uh, let's let's just have us a word of prayer uh, and uh, and then we'll we'll get ready to 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 head.